All right, today I'm working on a 2005 Chrysler Pacifica. It has the uh, 3.5 liter engine in it, V6. And I have an interesting problem. Uh, the speedometer just goes off for no reason. So I'll uh, give you a picture of that. All right, so I'm sitting in the car. If I start the car, I'm in park, so nothing's happening. I have uh, an ABS light on, which may, I'll look into that, because that may have something else to do with what I found, but. All right, so it's running. I'm in park. I'm gonna put it in gear. Doesn't matter which gear, even neutral. As soon as I take it out of park, you can see the speedometer, I'm in reverse now. If I go into drive, the transmission actually shifts and I'm sitting here while well, I quit now, but it's, like I said, intermittent. So what I have here is, I already know what, what the problem is, so I'm not gonna really show, I'm gonna shut it back off. I'm not going to really show a uh, diagnostic chain. I'm just going to talk for a second about what I found and then we're going to do some tests. I figured I'd put myself back on camera. So what I noticed was is usually when I'm racking the car I'll leave it in neutral so I can roll it around to get the rack in the right position and this car won't make the speedometer work in park I don't know if it's in the computer programming but as soon as you take it out of park that's when this happens so what I noticed is when I started it <coughs> it wasn't acting up and it was in neutral like I said I had the car up in the air kind of racked and the speedometer was at zero and all of a sudden I heard the alternator whine so there was my key right there um, I was going to chase for an AC voltage with a diode something bad in the alternator and that's where I'm going with this and that is what the problem is I'm just going to show you everything I've tested since I had that suspicion I've never had one before it's been 20 some years I've been doing this and you always hear that story when you go to one of those part store classes and there's that super smart guy that ended up with a car that the dealer worked on and put computers and sensors and then they buy the car for like a hundred bucks and they fix it and it's usually like a Mercedes or an Audi and I've heard that story a couple times so I don't know if they all know the same guy or if you know this happens a lot but I never had one so I'm excited to look at it and see what I have so let's uh go look at some lab scope readings. So the first thing I did is just put it, you know, on the battery and I went to a, uh, to a, um, AC voltage scale. I just line that up to where maybe you can see it. And I just went to Volt AC. I just wanted to see if there was anything. And you can see I have, you know, it's warmed up now, maybe 125, 135 millivolts. So there's something running through there. So I went to uh, my Volt DC. And you can see there's a lot of hash running through there. So if you go to a lab scope, We'll go over to the lab scope and you go to volts. I'm on a 50 volt you know, peak scale, but you can see I'm a below 20. 14 to, uh, 14 to 5 milliseconds, so I'm not going to see much running through there. But if I go and I take and go to my, um, hit the coupling AC, this will take all the DC voltage out of there and you're going to see I'm back down to my 0.1 but you can see it a little bit better. So if I if I go and cut this scale down to like the two volt scale, you're gonna see 
my AC voltage right there. So if I pause this real quick, I believe each one of these peaks are the diodes and this one here is probably, you know, my bad diode. So we're gonna look and see what the new alternator is when I put it on there. But if I go back to, I uh, hit the wrong button. So if I go, if I go over to the alternator, see I'm on the battery and, and stuff's being, you know, dampened by the battery. So if I just go back to my graphing meter and my volts DC, I'm sorry, my AC volts, you could see my one, you know, 120 millivolts. But if I take the lead off of the battery and go straight to the source, you can see I have 700 millivolts. So when you're doing one of these tests, it looks like to me, you gotta go closer to the source, close as you can to the alternator because the battery is dampening it. We'll definitely check this after as well. Um, this was just a simple test of the alternator to see what was going on. Now I wanna show you the VSS, the vehicle speed sensor. So if I just go to the regular test for the car I was on, Go to my previous vehicle, which is the Pacifica. Go to transmission, output, speed sensor. Go to tests. Get that sitting in the right way. So, got our signature test. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take my lead off of the alternator. All right, so I can't uh, put this on the tripod, but you can see down on the transmission where my flashlight is shining in between the two transmission lines. That is the input shaft speed sensor. And then over, let's see if I can get a good picture of that, where my light's shining down there and I have my wire back probing in there, that is the output shaft speed sensor. Let me see if I can get a better shot. There is the output shaft speed sensor and I have a uh, jumper wire tapped into the signal wire back probing it. So if we go back to the graph. Okay, I'm back on the uh, lab scope with the test for the actual output shaft speed sensor. I have the alternator disconnected, so I'm showing a flat line. But when I hook it up, you'll hear the alternator start whining. Out. And you don't see anything. Because I'm not hooked up. So if I hook it up, you're going to see a ripple running through that signal. Now if I take the alternator off and out of the picture, you can see it, it flat lines. Now I'm on a pretty bad scale. Now I'm going to show you with the alternator out of the picture, I'm going to put it in gear and I'm going to move the, you know, let the tires roll. And you'll see what the real signal looks like. far away, but I have it in gear. Going about seven miles an hour. All right, I have it in gear. I'm going about seven miles an hour. So this is what the output shaft speed sensor, which is your vehicle speed sensor, should look like. So it's pretty clean sine wave. Now, I don't know what happens when I actually hook up the alternator, if it distorts that. But you can see it, it messes with the signal pretty good. But my issue was more when it was sitting still. I'm sure this thing also had shifting problems because of it, but 
I never even got that far. It was just sitting still it did it for me. So I want to show you what it looks like. I'm going to put it back in park. All right, so it's back in park. Alternator is not hooked up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scale because it's just a small, we saw a 700 millivolt, so I'm just going to go to the one volt scale and you can see a half volt in either direction. When I hook the alternator back up, I have an AC sine wave running through my vehicle speed sensor. So if I go to two volts, you can see I'm at about a half a volt running through there. You know, change the time a little bit. You can see I have an AC sine wave going through my vehicle speed sensor. So my final test just, while well, the fan's on, my final test just for my own uh, curiosity is I put it in gear and had the speedometer moving. And when I disconnected the alternator, the speedometer quit moving. So this is my problem. So I'm gonna put the alternator in and then we will uh, look at some after readings just for comparison sake. All right, here we go. Um, it's a used car guy, so he got me a used alternator. Here's to hoping that it's good and I don't have to do it twice, so. I'm hooked up to the to the uh, output speed sensor right now. Alternator is hooked up, so let's see what we got. Come on! Every time I do this, the compressor kicks on. Well, you can see it's not super clean, but it's definitely not 700 millivolts. Okay, we'll go back to the volts AC. And you can see I have like 0 0.04, 0 0.03, so I dropped I dropped 100 millivolts right at the battery. And if I go back to the source, the alternator, so I have like 100 millivolts. So it is a used one. Don't know if a new one would be cleaner than that, but I don't have the 700 millivolts I had before. So we'll go back to the uh, lab scope. And I'll look at my volt DC. Whatever. All right, I'm down at my uh, one volt scale where I was seeing all that stuff. There's there's some crap running through there, but let's uh, go to. I'm not even sure what the heck I'm seeing there. So here we go, here's the next question. What am I seeing here? My five milliseconds. I'm not even sure what the peaks are. That could be sign of a this alternator ready to fail. So hooked up to the alternator. I see these little spikes. If I take it off the alternator and go to battery positive, you can see the battery is uh, dampening most of the spikes that I'm seeing. So if I go down to one volt, even 500 millivolts. So there is a little bit there and you can see 
an AC wave running through there with, you know, nothing near what I had, you know, so this one's fixed. I went in there, I put it in gear, the speedometer stayed at zero. Um, I did go to the ABS to see if, you know, sometimes you'll run the car and up in the air and only the front tires are spinning and the back ones aren't and you'll turn the ABS light on. So I was hoping that could be the issue, but from what I could tell, I probably just have a right front sensor fault. So I'll look into that, see if he cares about it. If he doesn't, then I'm done with what I needed to do. So there you go. There's my first AC voltage induced problem on a vehicle. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.